Hello, this is Maya. Well, today it's going to be just me talking, a little catch up. Benny, I'm sorry, he's now just decided he's got to drink a river, right? Okay, well, yes, it is cold here. It is super cold here. Ben, that's enough now. He's drinking and drinking and not stopping. Okay, that's enough. And then, of course, with his beard, he's driveling all through the house. Okay. <coughs> well, let's do a quick catch up. So I have been super busy the last two weeks, a little bit more than the two weeks, but the last two weeks have been especially stressful. Um, let's just do a quick catch up on my hubby, James. You know, I've posted um, a few weeks back, it's actually most probably a month or two back now, <clears throat> that he had gone in an exploration surgery in his upper, well, it's not the jaw because the jaw is the bottom, so up here, the maxilla up here, um, because they thought he might have cancer in the upper bone and they dug basically a hole all the way right through up into here um, to see what was going on. And thank goodness they didn't find cancer, but they still don't know what is going on. So um, they stitched it back up again and they waited for three four weeks for the swelling to go down and all the bruising and so on. Then he had another CT um, and it didn't go without complications because the stitches had sprung open again, which in itself is a complication because with su su such soft tissue, it is difficult to restitch again. Um, there are other options, but not many. They managed, however, to find a thread that would work, so they stitched him up again. Um, and that's now a, a few weeks back, <clears throat> and it is now healing. However, he will have to go back in the new year, and I think it will be around the April time, and he will have to have another exploration. So they're basically going to have to cut it open again, and redo the search and see what actually the problem is there because on the CT it's not it's showing up as a problem but they can't really identify what it is and the biopsy couldn't really find the matter per se either so they most probably have to redo that on the positive news I thank you for all of those who helped us by buying some of my shaving stuff from the den, which has all gone into um, getting something for him, <laughs> as in teeth for him to use. So they have made him now temporary um, falsies, if you like, that are sort of working, as I said, they're temporary and as the gums and everything is still changing, um, they will need to be redone again. And some of it goes comes from the NHS, but for the final thing where you will have to have at least two posts, um, that is not NHS funded. So all the money that you kindly have given me by buying some of my stuff on Facebook and eBay and wherever from that is put into a pot for that. So just to make sure that I am super grateful for anything that came through and I thank you very much for that. The funding is still going to go on because obviously we're not looking at here maybe a hundred or two hundred pounds. We're looking into well the seven to ten thousand pounds here. Um in you thinking, why is he not just taking normal falsies, as in the plastic dentures? Well, because he has a problem at the back of his gums, 
um, towards the very back and they basically hurt him. They, he can't use those, so he will need a different solution. So that's the answer to that. So we have looked into everything we can do. Now let's move on from there. That was just that quick catch up. So um, now that that is sort of healed and he has sort of dentures he can use for at least when he's out in public, um, he's fine. So what we thought is that it is best for him to go on a holiday now when I say a holiday, it's actually not totally a holiday, but it is away from the freezing cold here in the UK. So he has gone down to Spain and he arrived yesterday in Spain um, to have a little bit of warmth. Unfortunately, it is raining right uh, down there right now, so it is not much fun for him. It is pretty cool because it's damp. Um, and as you know, he's on the bus. Um, so, but anyway, it's still warmer than here. We are having, we have ice here and he hasn't. So it's still warmer. Um, so he's going to be staying there. I don't know, maybe, maybe a couple of months, maybe longer. I do not know yet. We'll see how he feels. So, well, he's got to be back by April latest anyway. So I'm holding up the 40 and you're thinking, why didn't you go down? Well, I didn't go down because this place needs me. I need to do work here. And also the other reason is I have three dogs, as you know, and the three dogs cost a lot of money to take down there. And I can't stay away for that long. So from that point of view, I wanted to save up all the money and rather put it towards his medical stuff and other things we need rather than me going down for a short time and the costs are the same. Whether, you know, I can't pay £20 per dog, which it costs for kennels. Um, apart from that, I don't want to put them in kennels for a month or so either. That's quite costly. So, and that is the discounted price, just so that you, that you get an idea. That's what it costs these days. <clears throat> um, so he's going to hopefully have a bit of warmth and get the bus ready. When I say get the bus ready, we're thinking about whether we might be selling or whether we're putting it on Airbnb for the time being when he gets back because he will not be able to go down for at least a year. Um, we would prefer to keep the bus and do Airbnb, but the campsite and everything still needs paying for. So that's happy. I'm on my own. So that is why I get to do a few more videos than usual because I don't have to be caring for him per se. Right, now, that is the husband catch-up. And of course, the two weeks prior to him leaving, I had to get all the lists together, what needs to go down, what needs packing, what needs getting sorted beforehand, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so, but we managed, and he's arrived safe and sound, and the comms are working as well, which is great, because I wasn't sure whether the comms would be working once he gets down there. We have had, in the previous years, we've had problems with the comms, but the internet is going, and he got everything set up. That is perfect, so I need not to worry. Now, let's go on to the DIY side. And yay, I finally finished this blanket. Oh, here it is. Sorry, here it is. Okay, it's finished. Now, oh, let me look, is the dog behind me? No, I don't want to be rolling over any tails. So let me try to get up. Right, and I'm just going to hold this up sort of in half and I will see if I can post the picture up. So, right, it's humongous. Well, it's more long than wide, but that is what I wanted. So, 
so you can see I have reflected the stripes going up I have reflected here on the side um, I did consider whether I was going to do a crochet another crochet um, edging but I think not um, I will see but I think if this is sufficient I've got to bunch it up like this it's just too big for me to hold um, so yay <laughs> I finally got that finished <laughs> I didn't think I would <laughs> so I'm super happy about that it started off as a small project I was just going to do the middle panel and then I to use up my scraps of yarn and then I decided oh no this looks a bit too plain and this may be a tiny bit too narrow but I wanted it long so that when I'm sitting on the sofa and often I don't know do you do this as well I sit I don't sit straight on the sofa like this I sit across like that and then the television's like sort of there on that wall and I put my feet up on the sofa so I'm, I'm sitting not lying but I'm sitting so I need something long to go all the way up so <laughs> that's why I wanted something that's not too wide but long enough to tuck the feet in and everything so um, comment below if you do that as well or if you have other other sort of weird ways of sitting on the sofa oh and of course when I'm sitting on the sofa then I have um, okay I'm sitting like sort of diagonal like that my feet are hanging off the sofa on the one side on the end there and then in the gap here is the big dog then I have the small dog often sitting on to, on my stomach and in the gap where my arm is and the armrest the black dog is sitting so that's often one big family sandwich basically so um, watching television and sometimes just sometimes I'm knitting as well or doing whatever so let me just check I was I actually put a little list together what I was going to say but now I've already forgotten that's a good one isn't it um oh yes so that was the blanket I wanted to show you and then I want to show you this is going to be posted I have recorded a tutorial and I've just got to edit it which is going to take a while because when frankly when I did it it was late at night and I was tired and I did a lot of um, speech mistakes so uh, so I have to edit it quite a bit and write down the correct terminology and things uh yeah so let me show you so these are the easy easy crochet slippers okay and i know they look a bit weird because i wanted mine to be really wide here yeah in most cases they're slimmer and go like this and then up but i wanted mine uh really wide so that I can fit my fluffy socks underneath there too. So these again are just for sitting on the sofa. You know, with, I told you my feet are always hanging off the edge. So that I have warm feet. So I wanted these. I wanted some crochet slippers. And the colour is this funny camel grey. Because I do not want any light colors if I'm on the tiled and wooden floors here as you know oh no you most probably don't know I have no carpets because that's more hygienic for the dogs I can sweep out every day hoover and then wipe the floors you know and disinfect them I don't disinfect on a daily basis but I hoover and sweep most probably every day sometimes twice if the weather's really awful so 
this tutorial is coming up as in it is already in the can I just have to edit it <coughs> sorry for that um, and then I have two more tutorials coming up that will also be crochet one will be a hat with the brim but it's going to be a little bit different because this was a request and I can't remember the lady's name and I'm sorry if I've forgotten your name um, but it's been quite a while ago and I said I wouldn't be able to do it until November or beginning December but what she wanted was something with the brim to keep the the rain off something that's really dense but also and now I've got to turn around <coughs> something that goes low down the neck fit in a bun like I have and keep the ears warm <laughs> so a challenge basically so I have to invent something that does all of those things so it keeps the rain off is quite dense so, uh, so crochet fits that best rather than knitting. So it's going to be a crochet hat that is low down, protects the ears from the wind and has a broom. So I'm going to be doing that. That will be the last. And then I'm going to and um, the next project I will be working on is another crochet project. A small crochet project and I'll try to fit this in first before the hat because um, if you are making things for Christmas and you just need something very quick I'm going to be doing some really nice fingerless mitts um, that are mm, I would say a beginners plus so you need to have a little bit of an idea um, of how to crochet the basic stitches this by the way is just treble in American terms I only I use American terminology this is just a half double crochet and you will need to do a double crochet and you need to know how to do front and back post um, but I am showing this rather slow on the um, on the video as well so that if you need help you can either check out other videos for that or just study the video and pause it and then study it again um, for the toe here this is rather easy I have chosen just a normal you can either do a crochet um, chain of five to six this is by the way this is a formula not an exact instruction so that will be easy as well so you can either do a chain or I use the magic ring um, so that's all you need to know on here the rest is all instructed and and done rather slow so that a beginner plus can follow and the same will be the case for the mitts you will need to know how to do a single crochet a chain you will need to know how to do a double crochet we will be doing a fan and the most difficult but you do not need to opt for that will be a foundation chain so if you don't want to do the foundation chain which is um, a beginner plus plus um, then you can just start with a normal chain so just to give you a clue um, that will be it and again it will not be a how to crochet but it will be a another formula as in another recipe as to fit any size you would like to crochet for so I think 
that is almost it for my catch up. It's nearly 20 minutes I've been waffling on. Um, oh, yes, and I have been tagged just by Jill. She shaves with Jill um, to do a blade pairing. <laughs> I nearly forgot what it was called now and I will do my best so for the shaving videos I'm going to be have coming up a blade sharing video where, we'll, where I will most probably pair um, a couple or three razors with uh, with a couple or three blades that go with these razors so that's what's coming up apart from my usual stuff now just cross your fingers, this is quite a lot of recording and editing and stuff to do in the next few weeks and I hope I can get it out for you as quick as possible. Um, I haven't got a hair video in mind right now, but maybe something will pop into my head that I haven't done and I do also know that the outstanding video of the woman's kilt let's just call it the women's kilt is still outstanding i have not forgotten <clears throat> but i need to prepare a few things for that um not quite so easy <laughs> so um and i need I, I need quite a bit of time to do that video so i need a bit of space that will be done on a weekend at some stage so i know there are things still outstanding i have not forgotten you i'm looking forward to exploring with you various things so see you soon bye bye